Hey gamers, it's Wintermute here from Grind This Game. And I just wanted to show you um, kind of a use for magma, since we have so much of it. And uh, I know some people have used it for turning uh, dirt into sand, and that's a really good use for it. But I thought I'd show something a little bit different here. In the uh, new automation upgrade that's coming out in a few weeks, uh, less than two weeks now, you can make metal tiles. If we look at some of the metals we can use, uh, tungsten is a new one. So if we make a tungsten tile, actually I've made a few here, and we look at the properties, we can see uh, the melting point of tungsten is 3421 Celsius. So what I've done here is I've made a little wall that's flush with the uh, magma. So it won't melt because it has a really high uh, melting temperature, and it also conducts the heat really well. So what I'm doing is I'm pumping oil and sending it through a valve and right now I have it set to 500 grams per second. And what happens is that the crude oil it has a vaporization point of around 400 Celsius. So it turns into petroleum at 400 degrees Celsius and then petroleum actually turns into natural gas at 538.9 degrees Celsius. So you can see it kind of, if I slow it down, the oil heats up really quickly, turns into petroleum, and then turns into natural gas. And see, I have 26 kilograms of natural gas here. It's really high pressure. And now, why would you want to turn crude oil into natural gas? If you look at the oil refinery, you'll see that 10 kilograms of crude oil goes in, and only 5 kilograms of petroleum comes out. You get a, you get a, a little bit of natural gas as well, but if you don't kind of count that natural gas, um, it turns out burning petroleum for energy is a pretty terrible way to generate en energy. If you turn the crude oil directly into natural gas instead, you get close to 40 times the amount of energy out of it. So building something like this might be really useful to build a giant power plant to use your crude oil more efficiently. Now you could have a little slickster farm in here. Um, these slicksters actually, there was one down here earlier and he was at a thousand degrees, so they're okay being in super, super hot areas. But anyway, you could build a slickster farm here, pump all your excess CO2 in here, and they would generate crude oil, and then you could pump the crude oil into something like this, heat it up, uh, and generate crazy amounts of natural gas. And I haven't tested how high this can go yet, but I think you can crank it up pretty high. Let's, let's set it at 1,000 here. If you start to get crude oil accumulating here, you know you're sending too much, but it's still flash, flashing into nat natural gas here. Now eventually your magma will cool down to the point where this is not useful anymore, but I think it's going to take quite a while because there's a lot, there's tons of energy built up in this magma. Now this natural gas, as you can see, it's almost at a thousand degrees, so you can't pump it out. It's too hot, it'll, it'll destroy a gas pump. So what I've done here is made a super thin tunnel uh, using insulated tile that's out of abyssalite and sending it up into a cooling chamber here. So you can see the crazy heat coming up this way. It's at like 900 degrees here and then it's cooled down to uh, around 16 degrees. Now you could put hydrogen in here with a bunch of weaseworts to keep this area cool. And then you can send your natural gas off into your natural gas generator power plant and generate power. You could send all this waste CO2 um, back into your slickster farm to generate more oil. And if you look at the map, you can see there's places where you can join magma. So if we remove this abyssalite here, we could fuse this whole chunk of magma here, which is pretty large. Goes, connects all the way down. Actually, it connects almost to everything. So if you carved out this little piece, you would have like all this magma connected together. Now eventually magma, when it cools down, it'll turn into igneous rock at uh, 1400 degrees. Actually, it's pretty close to that now. But the heat will still transfer through the rock. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think of this, whether it's a viable way to uh, more efficiently use crude oil. But if you do the math on the uh, energy the watts produced, from burning petroleum versus uh, turning it into natural gas first, you'll see it as about 40x. 
just as a quick comparison here. Petroleum generator takes 3,000 grams of petroleum, which is kind of the equivalent of um, 3,000 grams of natural gas. And you get two 2,000 watts. But the natural gas generator, you only need 60 grams to make 800 watts. So it's, it's a much better way to use your crude oil for energy. And it's essentially unlimited because if you trap enough slicksters and put them in a slickster farm, you'll have oil forever. Plus you've got your oil wells that you can use, you can tap. So this is new. Um, I think igneous rock used to, or lava used to turn into igneous rock and kind of form a solid tile, but now it seems to be precipitating out in little tiny chunks which is causing this uh, magma layer to fall. Very interesting. And we got 24, 25 tons of igneous rock sitting on the ground here. Interesting. So they, m that might cause this to not work if the magma level falls too much, because there's a vacuum in here. So as always, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.